Hello there! Today we will talk about why it is not possible to parry this using this. So what do we have here? Here we have a double-headed or double-bit axe. Obviously, it's something that someone would wield with two hands. Uh, obviously, this one is for lumberjacks, for cutting trees. But of course, in history, there were weapons similar to this. This video today applies not just to double-headed axes, but it also applies to any kind of bladed weapon that is on a shaft. So, some kind of a polearm, which is top-heavy. as pole arms typically tend to be. So a weapon such as this generates an awful lot of force. The reason for this is that it is two-handed, so you've got the lever action, that increases the force by an awful lot. And the other thing is that it's got a lot of mass at the far end, away from the fulcrum, which is your top hand, and so it generates an awful lot of force when it hits. For the same reason, it's not so agile, so not so nimble to use, you cannot uh, change its direction so easily or so fast or aim it somewhere else. But when it gets going and it hits, it hits like a truck. Now, the problem with parrying such a top heavy weapon with anything is that it just generates a lot of force and something has to oppose that force. We're not talking about deflections here. We're talking about straight parries that are aimed to block a weapon in its tracks. That is very difficult to do, even with a weapon that is also two-handed, such as a longsword. A longsword is actually also a lever. So what do I mean by a lever? Any kind of two-handed weapon acts as a lever. The top hand is basically the fulcrum. That's where it works as a lever. It works on that hand. That is point zero, so to speak. The further up you take your hand, the closer your fulcrum point comes to the heavy part, so to most of the mass of the weapon, and the easier it becomes to control. But for the same reason, it just doesn't generate the same amount of force when it hits because, uh, because it does matter how far from the fulcrum point most of the mass is for the force that is centrifugally generated during a weapon hit. Today we will not even go into how difficult it is to parry such a small blade with anything because you basically need to come on the blade to parry it on the blade. You can parry it on the shaft but uh, it's not exactly the same, because if you parry on the shaft, that actually is further than the parry. So that is actually a danger. Com combined with the mass of the weapon and the, the force with which it hits, uh, it, might, it might actually be able to hurt you if you parry it on the shaft, but sometimes you don't have an option. But generally, even with the longsword, which is also a lever, any kind of two-handed weapon, sword or otherwise, is a lever, because you use two hands to... Uh, wield it, it still is very hard to parry. Why is that? Because the force of your lever action must be equal to the force of the swinging object, which is very top heavy. So you need to apply a lot of force to manage to parry this. And also you need to parry close to the hand, because the further out from the hand you go, the more easy it is for your opponent to press your weapon out of the way. The closer you are to your hand, let's say that you are, if you are right next to the hand, it's almost as if you are pushing with your hand with the help of a lever. So that is actually your best bet. It's not very safe because you need to be super precise. A little bit over the point where you want to parry and you get your hand hurt, but that's your only option with a two-handed sword. Now, the reason why it is impossible to parry properly with a one-handed sword against a top-heavy two-handed weapon, such as this one, is that this is not even a lever. So basically, what you do, even if you parry right here, at the very bottom of the blade, which is your strongest point because it's right next to your hand, so what is the problem with that? The problem is that even if you manage to not get your hand hurt by parrying one centimeter higher than you should, and you manage to perfectly parry here on the strongest point of the blade, you still don't have a lever action. 
So if you parry up here, that's so easy to push aside because even with a two-handed sword, basically, like a long sword, because there is no resistance up there. It's the weak part of the blade and you don't even have a lever to, to try to create, you know, some more leverage. So coming to understand this may actually help you realize a couple of things that have to do with Hema and with uh, historical fighting battles and so on. For example, the Battle of Stanford Bridge. The Saxons had elite Haskell units armed with two-handed heavy axes and those were pretty large and heavy axes even compared with other two-handed axes of the time. And the Vikings were typically armed with uh, one-handed weapons and shields or a spear and a shield. Against such a force being generated, a shield and especially the hand behind the shield can only do so much. Even if the shield doesn't break and it holds, the force is going to transfer through the shield to the user. And mechanically, there is a limit to how much force our shoulder can take, our elbow can take, our wrist can take. And if the shield comes crashing on you, there is also some blunt trauma that will happen. So it seems like those units only had to come close and start swinging. Now, if that is the case, then how did that force ever lose? Well, it's very simple. The only way to beat that kind of force is if you intercept them before they come this close. So what does that mean? Apart from missile weapons, which is a way to intercept people using two-handed weapons, which means they don't have a shield. Although there is a workaround about that, which is to actually hold your two-handed weapon in one hand, hold the shield until you get close, then throw the shield on your back and fight with two hands. But the other thing that somebody can do, and you don't have much of a defense against when you have a two-handed axe or similar weapon, is actually spears. If they can actually penetrate your armor, then you can come close enough to start swinging. And once you start swinging, it's really difficult for anybody to stop you with a one-handed weapon or even a shield. You can say it's only a matter of time until the two-handed axe wielder wins. Now, at the time of the Saxons, the armors they were using, they did have vulnerabilities, pretty important ones. Mail rings could actually be torn asunder by spear thrusts in it. And also there were several exposed angles on the neck and face with the helmets that they were using. But something to think about is that once full plate armor became prevalent, two-handed polearm weapons also became the weapon of choice. Because now the polearm user could use something that was super top heavy and very devastating in his strikes, almost irresistible, against somebody else, whether he had a shield or the poor guy had a one-handed sword, I hope not, or even if he had another kind of polearm or something that did have leverage for defensive purposes, that was still a great weapon. And now with full plate armor being worn, almost everything was protected. So spe especially spear thrusts, which is the main danger for somebody using something like this, were not so effective anymore because the spear would glance off the full plate. A spear cannot really penetrate full plate except very circumstantially and even then usually not with lethal consequences because it just penetrates a little bit. But swinging this, even against somebody encased in steel, is sure to cause breakages, it's sure to cause concussions, if not break completely the steel and uh, you know cut through it just because it generates so much force because of the mass and because the mass is at the top together with a swinging motion which creates centrifugal force, it just becomes devastating. So, in short, keep in mind, just because we do historical swordsmanship doesn't mean that the sword is a solution to everything. This could never be able to parry this in a real fight. Thanks for watching.